So my name is Sarah Boyle. I'm the event supervisor for the uh, Code Ninja event. And um, so I was just going to go over some of the, the differences, I guess, from last year. The big difference is that we're using JavaScript this year. Um, last year was using Java. Um, so the test itself, oh, sorry. Um, so the test itself is going to have two parts. It's going to have a multiple choice section for the first part, and that'll be worth around a third of the points. And then we're going to have a hands-on programming section, and that'll be worth around two-thirds of the points. So the, um, the event rules are online for anybody who didn't get the handout. I know we ran out, so I apologize about that. But the, um, the first part, the multiple choice section, we have a, a list of topics included there. So those topics will be used on the first part, but then they will be applied on the second part. So the kids will be expected to know how to write code to do those things for the second part. Um, the second part will be worth more points, but also the, the questions will be more challenging, I anticipate, because they'll actually be having to write code instead of just understand how code works and things like that. So they will have to know a little bit of syntax and things like that. Um, so this is the, for anybody who didn't hear before, this, this list of websites. Um, I'm recommending that you use these as resources for coaching and learning and like teaching the kids how to write code. We didn't put together our own resources because these are way better than I would have come up with in the last couple months. And um, so give us any feedback too on, on these resources if anybody finds that they're lacking in any area, maybe we can give more information. Um, make sure just to, to reference the rules to make sure you're following the right topics on some of those resources because there's so many different things in programming that they'll go into that we're not going to touch on all of those for this particular event. Um, the handout that everyone should have gotten was a multiple choice test example questions handout. So I just threw together some example questions that you can use to teach and so that the coaches have an idea of what types of questions will be on that multiple choice part. A lot of it's looking at what the output is or what the value of a number is at the end of a code snippet. So they sh the kids should be able to understand how to read through code. That's basically what we're asking. Um, the um, then, can you throw up the website, Jeremy? So the second part of the test is a hands-on programming portion. So one of the things we did was we put together a mock-up website. The link is at the top. It's science-olympia.com um, for the example website. So this is a resource for the coaches and students alike. The idea is that we wanted them to get a feel for what the interface would be for the, for the actual hands-on programming part of the test. It'll look very similar to this. It won't have a solution button. But other than that, it'll, it should look very similar to this. Um, so to walk you through this interface, so on the top, we give uh, instructions on what we're expecting the students to do. There's a box for writing their code. Um, there's an output box for what their output will be when they click the run button. And then we have expected output. Um, so yeah, so you can see once the run button is clicked, the, the code snippet executes and, and it'll output. And then when it's correct, you'll get this check mark. And when it's incorrect, you'll get that x. Um, so, We've included solutions for all of these problems. So this is to give an idea of the types of problems we'll ask the students to complete for the hands-on programming portion. And for this and for the multiple choice, we, we kind of made it so that it goes in um, increasing difficulty throughout the test. And they should expect that that's going to be how the, the actual test will be as well. So the, the easier problems should be more loaded in the front. And then as the test goes on, they'll be tested on more advanced concepts. Um, could you go to the next problem? So there's multiple ways of actually 
getting the correct output for some of these problems. So you could just um, output hello world five different times on five different lines, or you could use a loop to do it, and a loop would be more efficient. So that's another thing that we're asking these students to do. They'll get points for getting the, the output correct, but they'll get more points if they do it in a more efficient manner through like the use of a loop. So we included in our, in our output solution, we included the most efficient way that we thought of how, of how to do it. Um, so that you could see kind of more of what we're aiming towards, but they would still get the problem. They would get points for the problem if they just got the output to match. Um, so there's kind of two pieces for that hands-on programming part. It's the actual output matching, and then it's also doing things efficiently. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we are. Um, we haven't completely figured out all the point allocation stuff yet because we haven't completed the test yet. But um, one of the things we, we were asked in the first session, oh, sorry, I didn't reiterate. The question was if we're going to allocate different points for efficiency and for getting the problem correctly, and we, and we will be doing that. Um, and one of the questions that we were asked in the first session is how will they know how many points each question will be worth, and for the test, we'll add on there how many points they're going to get for each piece. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So the question was, can they go back and forth between problems? Yeah, we will. They this website does have that ability, and we'll also include that for the test. Um, in case they want to skip a problem, but just so that they know the problems later on will be an increased difficulty from, at least from my perspective, you know, more advanced concepts, calling functions, things like that will be later on. Yeah. Yeah, so this is what the hands-on programming part, sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the question was if they'll only have one computer per team. And yeah, they'll still only have one computer per team. There's only one uh, hands-on portion to complete, and there's only one multiple choice portion to complete. And they can choose how to do those things as a team. Uh, we're not going to dictate how they split up the work, because there will still be the hands-on part, the hands-on programming part, and the multiple choice but they can decide if they want to divide and conquer or if they want to do each of those pieces together. Are there any other questions? OK, so just one more note. Uh, one of the handouts that I had, um, it didn't actually get printed. So I'll make sure that that's included on the website. Um, so that had those example resources that we showed earlier. And then it also just had some topic coverage for each of the problems in the multiple choice section and the hands-on example that we provided, just in case anybody's confused about where they should go for what, to what topics they're being covered in those problems. So I'll make sure that that's included on the website soon, on the Macomb SO website. Um, were there any other questions? Nothing? Okay. You guys are easy. <laughs> okay. This is we don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Okay. So this is your first time? Okay. I have no idea what this is about. Okay. So hopefully the website will give you guys a good feel for like the, qu like the question prompts and things like that by the instructions um, box. And then you can kind of see some of the, the solutions and the topics that we're covering. Um, I really recommend those three websites that were put up earlier for learning. They have really great explanations of um, the concepts in English, which I know is not something that everything. Are those websites that are like I can throw my, ch my child at? Um, I guess I'm not sure. I, um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Check it out first. Um, but, but the nice thing. I don't understand it better than me. <laughs> so the nice thing about the websites is um, they have 
editors in the browser um, so that they can do these like these little example problems and run code in the browser. So you don't have to have special software or anything like that. Um, so it's it's it was a really great. I, I uh, coached this event last year, and it was a really great resource for um, for getting the kids learning and writing code really quickly. Um, so hopefully you can find some value in that. Um, the, the same way you can use our, the example website that we created for the hands-on part as a little, little training tool, um, they have that type of thing on their websites too. Um, but they have more explanation of the topics. And I didn't feel like I would come up with a better solution to that, so that's why I'm kind of directing you to these example resources because they have like all of the topics. My only advice would just be to make sure that you look at the topics that we're asking them to cover because I know some of the websites have more complicated things on them. And so instead of spending time on getting really down a rabbit hole that isn't going to be useful for them for the test, I would recommend to make sure that you're hitting like the, st oops, the stuff that, um, that we called out specifically. So, yeah. Are there any other questions? Yeah. So um, we did this last year. OK. It seems like it's very different from last year. So there's no, um, I remember we had to do like data types and mm -hmm. of operations and like. Yeah. Um, so the question was that it, it's very different from last year. Yeah. Um, so. Last year, I felt the focus of the, I, I didn't run the event last year. I was just a, an event coach last year. And I felt that um, the information that was required for them to learn last year was really heavily focused on um, definitions and things. And that didn't really interest um, the students that I was teaching. It was really hard to like get them focused and engaged on that. So for this year, we really tried to go with more of a hands-on approach where they're going to have the ability to write code and see their code do something. And um, hopefully, my, my hope is that they'll be more engaged in the learning. Um, so, so some things are similar this year. Um, we do have variables and types. But with JavaScript, it's not, it, it, there's not as much focus on that because you just can create a variable and it can hold a bunch of different values. It doesn't have to be declared with a specific type in mind originally. Um, so I know that might be confusing to people who aren't as familiar with it, but my hope is that it will actually be less confusing to teach the kids so that they don't have to understand as much to make something that works. Um, and we do have um, order of operations and things like that, but that's more just a way for them to use like to actually write code and understand that you know certain things happen before other things within code so like division happens before addition or something like that um, so my my hope is that this can be more hands-on this year and less focused on learning definitions and just memorizing um, so we definitely would love feedback on anything if you feel that you're hitting roadblocks because this is still is a demonstration event, and we're still working on creating something that, that makes sense. Um, so if there's any feedback that anybody has, if you feel like a particular topic is too complicated, um, please give us feedback through the macombso.org website. Um, that'd be really helpful. And if you have any specific questions, you can post um, through the FAQ on that website as well. Yeah. So we're, oh, sorry, the question is, um, the rules are, say, 30 minutes for the test. And how is that port portioned out between the different parts? Um, so the way I envision the test running, we will give them the computer and the multiple choice questions at the start. And they can choose to do it however they want to. Um, it's, I don't want to dictate how the students actually have to take the test, because I think different people will gravitate towards different ways of doing it. So um, yeah, so that's, that's, that's a personal choice for them, so how they want to do it. So yeah, that's the plan. We'll see how it works in practice. <laughs>
Yeah. I'm looking at the um, sample you have here for mm -hmm. the choice. It seems that the multiple choice questions are also going through codes and knowing what it outputs and things like that. Um, will there be more of those definition-type questions in the multiple choice? Because all of them here are all codes. Um, OK, so the question was, will there be more definition type questions for the multiple choice? Because the example one is only code um, output. I, I have not emphasized um, definitions in the, in the rules. Um, so I don't anticipate there being a lot of definition type questions at all. Um, I, I just don't feel like it's something that the kids gravitate towards or find particularly interesting. So. The multiple choice questions, um, it's, it's more understanding how to read code, and it's because they have to understand like what the output's going to be. So my thought is that it's not quite as focused on syntax for them, because the code is written. They just have to tell me what it does. So that's why it's structured that way. So the hands-on part is going to be something where they're going to have to be writing syntax more themselves. Um, but then the, the, the multiple choice is going to be mostly just telling me what a code snippet does, what a value is at the end of a code snippet, things like that. Um, but the test is not complete yet, so I can't speak to exactly what is going to be on the test because I'm not sure yet. So, yeah. Uh, do, you, do you have a kind of a rough idea of how many questions in the first part? And yeah, so this was asked in the, so in the first session that was also asked. Um, so the question was how many questions will be in the first part versus the second part. Um, I'm still playing around with that. I haven't really figured out how many I think is going to be too much. I know 30 minutes is not a lot of time. That's a limitation by the event. It's not, it wasn't something that I would have chosen necessarily. So we're going to have to figure out how many, I don't have a good feel for that yet, basically. Um, I'm going to see how the, um, the district events go um, and see how I anticipate putting more questions on um, the hands-on portion than the kids will necessarily get through um, because I'd rather have too many than too few. Um, so they might not finish, and that's okay. But we'll just see how it goes um, and see how many they can realistically get through. I don't know how long it'll take them, honestly, because somebody who's more advanced might do it a little faster, and somebody who you know is struggling a little bit more with the concepts might need a little more time. So I'm not sure. Um, yeah, that was a long answer to say I'm not sure. But <laughs> yeah. are there any more questions? Okay, well thank you for coming. <laughs>